Have you ever wanted to see a tracked amphibious vehicle that can carry containers across the map in Stormworks? Well, there are actually quite a few of them out there, but today we're going to be building one that is actually really, really cool. So, let's go ahead and get to building. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to need somewhere for the container to go, so let's go ahead and chuck this back here like so. And I believe there is 29 bricks in the middle. There we go. That is where it will be able to fit. We're then going to go out sideways by five on each side. Uh, that looks pretty good, and... That looks pretty good as well. So, inside of here is where the container can actually go. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a connector really quick. Push that onto there, and onto there, and that's all good. The next thing we need to do is have somewhere for both me and the passengers to sit. So we're going to go ahead and build some sort of room at the front. Don't really know how tall this thing needs to be, or actually how low it needs to be either. But so far it's looking alright. What I'm going to do from here is actually go down a little bit. We're going to grab this color and I'm just going to do this. There we go. Uh, we're then going to go from here out sideways uh, by about two, I guess. Uh, I'm going to chuck one of those guys onto there. And we're going to actually start with some of the hull. Yeah, that's right. This thing is going to float, so the hull can start here. Interesting. That'll do. Yeah, she's looking pretty nice. Uh, I do think this bit needs a little bit more work, but down here, the hull is looking interesting. I do need to figure out how to add tracks to this as well. I think they're going to go just below, and that'll be good. Okay, so uh, go ahead and close this off a little bit at the front. I'm just going to go ahead and send that across there, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and send this across here like this. There we go. Let's go ahead and seal up the back end as well, and... You know what, we'll just go ahead and do this across the back end as well. Okay, we now need to figure out where the tracks are going to go, uh, but we also need to actually seal this thing off as well. So, let's go ahead and start sealing it first. There we go, just like this. And then we can add the tracks afterwards. Hopefully this provides enough buoyancy to actually allow us to float along. Uh, but I do understand if it, if it doesn't. Because <laughs> it might not. Okay, it's now time to add where the tracks are going to go, and I believe we're going to start them around here. Uh, the thing is, this is going to go a lot further forwards than you'd think, and it's going to go all the way to the back. There we go. So far, so good. Uh, we are going to have to have it come down a little bit more, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this, and I'm just going to send it again. There we go. Okay, tracks. <laughs> I don't even know if I'll be able to fit any of these. Uh, tank? Yeah, there we go. So, small is what I would normally go for, but medium is what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm gonna have to lower it down. Again. Gonna have to lower it down again, that's crazy. Alright, check that on there, send it forwards, excellent. Might need to make the buoyancy bit a little bit bigger, not gonna lie. But it might also be fine. Okay, so, chuck that guy on there, excellent. We're gonna go ahead and chuck some medium wheels on there as well, obviously. Uh, ooh, that's weird. I don't think it's supposed to line up like that, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Let's go ahead and spawn it in and see what it looks like. Oh, yes. Interesting. This could be fine. Oh, would you look at that. So, we need to make sure that uh, we actually have a bunch of ground clearance at the front. So, we're actually going to go ahead and extend it straight up from there allowing us to possibly drive from the ocean straight onto the land because our tracks will impact the land before the vehicle will. Yeah, okay, so far so good. Unfortunately for us, though, I feel like we might be sat too low in the water for that to actually be useful. But let's go ahead and seal that bit up right there, and that'll provide a little bit of buoyancy. Oh, I don't know how to feel about that. It looks a little bit like a train has been put onto tracks. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Trains do go on tracks, but you guys know what I mean. Anyway, what we need to do is be able to get into this area. I need an engine in there. That is why I've put some radiators on the side. I need to see if this thing is even buoyant. I need to add a way to get in through the ceiling, because uh, if we're in the water, these doors... Probably aren't going to cut it, and I don't know, we need to sort out everything else. I'm probably going to put a winch in the front, that'll be very, very useful. I'll probably end up putting a winch in the back end as well, 
Uh, a crane would look really, really cool in this little gap, but I think the gap would have to be uh, maybe too bigger in order to actually have a crane. Um, but that could be a possibility, maybe. We were always going to need an engine, and this right here is the engine we're going to be using. As you can see, it's not uh, the most many cylinders, the most many cylinders that you can have, but it is some cylinders, and as long as we've got some, uh, this thing will be able to be powered. I would have went with a smaller engine, but I think this is kind of cool. So, we've obviously got the clutch on this side. This is going to go down to here. It's also going to go into some propellers that are going to go on the rear down here. Uh, we're then going to need a rudder as well, but that's fine. So, let's go ahead and shove this in uh, the back of there and see if it can move. All right, let's jump inside so that we can actually maybe see it. Uh, I've added these hatches so we can actually see through. And that's okay, so we've got ourselves a cylinder, we've got the crankshaft, we can actually get to the clutch from here. Uh, the exhaust is there, the fuel thingamabobby is there. On the other side, we've obviously got the air manifold, and we have the belt drive things right here. The starters, though, are on that side. Which is a little bit annoying, but we can sort of get to almost everything. Also, there is a window on the back so we can actually see the engine from back here. It's kind of like a Lamborghini. <laughs> Alright, so this is currently the pipe that is coming from the engine. We need this to split into four different sections. One of the sections is going to go to the actual uh, wheels, because that makes sense. Uh, we're obviously going to do this in the color that everything else is in, so angle this bit... Uh, upwards, it's gonna go in there like that. We're then gonna bring it inwards like this, and we're gonna chuck it on there like that. We're then gonna shove a clutch into there, so just go and shove this on here like that. That's all fine. Uh, I should have been doing that on both sides, so let me do it on the other side. And then we need to do a propeller in the middle. Alright, originally I was thinking maybe we split it into four, but actually, let's just split it into, uh, three. We'll have a small propeller right there mounted in the center. Kind of like this, there we go. Let's go ahead and box that bit off real quick. Yeah, it doesn't look, doesn't look terrible from the outside. Uh, we're gonna have to shove a rudder on the back of there as well, so let's delete this. We'll go ahead and grab a rudder straight away and just chuck it straight on there like this. <laughs> yeah, I mean that looks bizarre, because it's actually in it, but whatever, that's fine. Hopefully it works. Anyway, we now need to split this into three. I need to delete this guy so that it'll come up. And then we need to put a clutch on there as well. All right, here we go. Let's start the engine. Okay, throttle it up right here. And then if I push W... If I push W... No, you know what's wrong? We didn't actually activate the clutch. Uh, the clutch is going to be activated by the same thing the throttle's activated by, and that'll be fine. I forgot we even had that clutch in there because we've got all the other clutches in here as well. So, go ahead and do this and this. Okay, nice, and now if I push W, okay, we can actually move, right, but I think our gearbox needs to be, I'm gonna knock it down to 9 to 5, this one's gonna be knocked down to 9 to 5 as well, and then we'll spawn it in, and then we'll see if it works, come on, alright, do this and this, good, go, oh, it still wants to shut down, it still wants to shut down a little bit. Hmm. All right, well, we just had to wait for the engine to rev up, and now it goes absolutely crazy. All I wanted to do now is to check if it can actually float, which it does float. It's a little bit front heavy, but that's okay. We can get that sorted out. And now the propeller on the back is actually working as well. Okay, interesting. We can probably throttle it down, but she is going. That's pretty good. Yeah, unfortunately the tracks are still going. Oh, they've stopped too. Okay, nice, yeah. So we can steer it around in the water if we need to. Uh, if we get to, I don't know, a bit of land that we need to go up, hopefully we can just drive out. Oh, look at that. That is, I mean, it's kind of insane. It's a very long vehicle, which is partly an issue, but also partly why it's actually pretty good. I need a reverse on it, but that's awesome. Alright guys, we've got a bit of a problem. Turning is an absolute pain in the butt, and that's mainly because the beam on this thing is very skinny. The beam being uh, the distance from the left to the right hand side, and then obviously it being super super long. That makes it really hard to actually steer this thing, which is kind of annoying. 
But once we're in the water, we have an actual rudder, so turning in the water is fine. I'm not sure how to solve the land situation just yet. I could make the tracks a little bit smaller, but that brings its own issues. Because if the tracks don't quite go to the front, or they don't quite go to the back, driving in and out of water is going to be an issue. So, just to show that off really quickly, let's go find somewhere kind of steep. We're going to go ahead and drive it into that. Which is, I guess this bit right here seems to be the steepest. And we should be able to just drive straight into it and drive straight out of the water. Also, just a side note, I think changing the gear ratios for when we're in the water just makes a lot more sense, because at the minute we are wasting a hell of a lot of fuel doing absolutely nothing. Anyway, we're almost where we need to be, so let's jump back inside, uh, start up the actual tracks, and we should be able to drive straight up here, which is pretty crazy. Here we go. Straight up out of the water, and uh, bam, there we go. But as I said earlier, oh, oh, steering this thing is an absolute pain in the butt. <laughs> However, I suppose if we don't need to steer very much, we can just drive through things, I guess that'll be fine. All right, damage is turned on, and we've just been damaged quite a lot. Interesting. Anyway, this thing is also missing a bunch of equipment, so let's put some of that in as well. I might have just fixed everything. I don't know if you guys can see the difference in the wheels, but I've added some actual spinny wheels that will turn and allow us to actually turn a hell of a lot tighter in this thing. Even if uh, a lot tighter is still quite wide. It actually works! What I want to do now is shove a container on the back, and I want to see what that looks like. So, let's get that done next. And there we go. There it is with a container mounted to the back. It's, uh, it's an interesting one. I don't actually think that container is on. So, I don't think it is actually properly connected. Which is weird, because I don't know if I can get to the button or not. I can see the button at the back there, but I can't see the button here, and that, I think, is an issue. So I don't think it's actually connected. I don't know what to do in this situation. Uh, alright, well, I mean, it's on there, it doesn't seem to be slipping off, so I guess we just leave it as is. Let's go ahead and get back inside. There we go. Close the door. Drive into the water! Go, go, go! Whee! Oh yeah, that's a problem now. <laughs> it is a problem now. Ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa! Why are we under the water? Why are we under the water? Oh my goodness! Uh... I don't know what's happening now. I haven't changed anything except from I added that... that... container. That's all I actually ended up doing. Weird. I don't know what's happening to us right now. Guys, there's some sort of weird interaction between my vehicle and uh, the container. I don't know if you can tell, but it seems to be having some issues. <laughs> it's currently floating around a little bit. That's weird. Okay, this time it's gone on there correctly. Let's go ahead and get back inside. So we'll go ahead and close that up. We'll sit in the seat. Oh, we need to definitely make sure this is closed. Uh, you can hear a siren going off right now, and I think that will probably be a tsunami somewhere. But we're going to ignore that for a second, and we're going to gently place ourselves in the ocean. Yeah, just very gently. Here we go. Gentle as can be, let's go! Whee! Okay, we are in the ocean. We are floating, sort of. Not floating as much as I'd sort of want to, but that's okay. And then if I introduce some propeller, we can actually somewhat motor ourselves along. Would you look at that? That's not really how I wanted this to be. I have an idea, I can fix this. Okay, so a way to stabilize vehicles in this game, in the water, is to literally add some control surfaces to the sides. Uh, sort of just like this, there we go. We'll do some at the back as well, one, two, three, and four, excellent. And that should be it. Alright, as gentle as can be again, let's go! Yes! Whee! Okay, we're in the water. And we are more stable than we were before, however, we are underwater. That seems to be an issue. That really feels like an issue, too. Alright, set this to 50% throttle. There we go. And we are moving. Let's go ahead and set it to 70% throttle. There we go. Now we're moving nicely in the water. Would you look at that? It's beautiful! It's doing its job, guys. It's doing its job. 
Okay, we're about to put this thing into an extreme test. We're gonna try and get out of the water and go up this cliff right here. So, we're ramping into it. Oh. Okay, we might have went into it a little bit hard there, and I might be almost dead. Uh. Okay, well, you know what? This is, this is a good thing. It allows us to test some things out. <laughs> we can fix this. We can fix it. Uh oh, we're upside down. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. If I can fix this on the go, just like this, then we're all good. We're all good. All right, we've almost fixed the whole front end. We are a little bit wobbly. We've rolled over a little bit, but don't worry about it too much. We're good, we're good. Okay, the engine still seems to be running. Never mind, the engine has just quit running. Uh, unfortunately, I think the problem is that we've just accidentally messed up the fuel tank. However, even after a crash like that where it's set on fire, we are still able to escape the thing. And it still floats. Beautiful. But no, I do want to do a test where it goes up a sheer cliff. So that's the next thing. Also, as a little bit of a guard to stop that from happening again, if you get some skis and you chuck them on here, uh, it will actually really, really help it not be damaged. So we're going to go ahead and chuck those guys there. We're going to go to the back and I'm going to do a very similar thing. Probably around here? There we go. And hopefully that'll stop it from exploding next time. Anyway, spawn it in again. We're going to go find a cliff and we're going to climb it. Oh, there is one other thing that we desperately need too, and that's brakes. To be honest, I feel like this is probably one of the steepest hills we'll actually have to get up, and honestly, it does it so easily. Once you get into something even steeper, the issue doesn't become... Well, it doesn't come from the fact that it's not powerful enough. It actually becomes a problem because of how skinny this thing is. It's not actually um, wide enough to be very stable, so that's one of the issues with it. Honestly, it's still a pretty cool vehicle. We built it all in one video. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of it, and let me know in the comments what you guys want to see next. But for now, I think I'm going to end this one here. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.